Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to another video. So today I am going to do a triptych painting. It's going to be a Dutch pour, but I'm going to do something a little bit different with the colors. Um, I'm going to use two metallics um, for the background. So the bottom half of the canvas is going to be this beautiful, I believe it is ruby, satin finish metallic paint from Modern Masters. Now this you can find at Michael's, okay? So that's going to be the bottom half. The top half, I'm going to do an iridescent white by uh, Liquitex. So I thought that would be a nice contrasting um, background. And then I have a nice blue and a muted pink palette. So I think it's going to be really, really pretty. At least I hope it's going to be. <laughs> okay, so the colors I'm going to use are going to be uh, muted pink by Liquitex. These are in my Amazon shop. This is my favorite paint to use um, when it comes to an acrylic paint. They, they're they so pigmented, you need only a little bit. Now, they are more pricey. I think they're like $12 or $13 for this little two-ounce bottle, but I really don't have to use that much. Like When you mix up your colors for your Dutch pours, now I'm doing three 12 by 24 canvases. This is a three ounce Dixie cup. It's only half full. So one and a half ounces of each color is plenty to do those three canvases. You don't have to use a lot. So for this here, I used a little, I would say the size of a popcorn kernel worth of paint with this much Floetrol. So an ounce of Floetrol and it's, that is the color it's supposed to be. So. You don't need to use that much, whereas something like this, you use a lot more, okay? So that's why they're more pricey, because they're more pigmented. The second color I'm using is Turquoise Thalo by Golden. Then I have Muted Turquoise. Muted Turquoise and Muted Violet, my favorite two colors out of this. Probably all the paint colors, those two, you know. And then... I have here a color shift by Folk Art. I went and cleaned up my room and I have a bunch of paints I got to start using up. So I have that. And then for my gold, I'm using the new Prism Pour by Color Art, which I absolutely love. So I will show you that here in the camera. It's very close to 24 karat gold by Deco Art, the color. You can see the shimmer and sparkle in there and it is just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to be using that color also. Now, if you're interested in these prism pours, there are four colors out right now. In the next coming weeks, there will be a few more. Uh, right now, there's a bronze, copper, gold, and a um, hot orchid, which is gorgeous. I showed that, I believe, in the last video or the video before that. So there's going to be more colors coming out um, over the next upcoming weeks. What's what's kind of delaying it a little bit is the wildfire fires in California. Uh, the crew has not been able to work some of the days full time because the air quality is just so bad. So it slows down the release of new things like this, but they're coming. I promise. So I'm going to set up here. I'm going to put the base coat down. Let me show you the consistency of my paints. So very runny. It's not really leaving. Ooh, I got a little pink in there. It's not really leaving a mound. It just goes right back into itself. Okay. So this is a one part paint, two part flow trawl ratio. Okay. So let's get started. Okay. So I got my two colors down there and, um, what I did was I just poured some puddles of paint and blew it out with the blow dryer. That's the easiest way to cover multiple paintings at or multiple canvases at once. So now what I'm going to do, I love, love, love these colors together. I cannot tell you how much I love these two colors together. They are just absolutely beautiful. 
So I'm going to start with my darkest color first, because if I put the, the lightest, which would be that pink, down first, it's going to get lost in here. So I want to start with, with a really deep color. And for that, I'm going to start with the muted turquoise. All right. And I'm going to just pour right down that center line. I'm going to follow whatever direction it goes in. I'm not going to pour straight. I'm going to pour kind of jagged and just follow it. Now, obviously, you can pour whatever way you want to. This is just the general direction. Now, if you want to see some really beautiful Dutch pours, some more really du beautiful Dutch pours, you can go over to Canela Sirocco Art and check her out. She has some amazing work. Yeah, I like that. I like that composition. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted there. Yeah, she has some really, really beautiful work. So make sure you check her out. We're trying to support each other to help each, channel, each other's channel grow. And it's been a pleasure, let me tell you. I wish there were more... Uh, more channels that did that, but it seems once they start getting really big, they don't want to know you, but that's okay. Who needs them? This, I, I'm telling you, this palette is just knocking my socks off right now. <laughs> All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in, I think I'll do this folk art color next. I'll save the pink and the gold for last. There's a big clump of something in my paint there. Big clump of something. All right, that's gonna slide right down the side. And it's important to keep your panels together just while you're doing this so that the design kind of matches up. But then once you're done, you have got to separate them or else they will dry together, which would probably make for easier hanging, I would imagine. Okay, so we got that one. So now I'm gonna put down the gold, the prism pour Egyptian coin. Again, if you're interested in that, I have a link in the description to colorart.com and a coupon code that saves you 20% off your entire order, which is a really good coupon. Most companies, it's either five or 10, so yeah. All right, and then the last color will be the muted pink. I hope it works out. Okay, so now I'm going to put on some music while I design this because the blow dryer is just obnoxious. I don't think anybody wants to hear that.
All right, this is, whoopsie. I just kicked you guys. This is absolutely gorgeous, just like I knew it was going to be. Uh, I'm going to pull out my airbrush, which, by the way, one of my viewers, Miss Creative Rainbow, made something aware to me that I was not aware of before. She said, you know, Tammy, all of your blowing tools have names. You have Demon Dryer, you have Blowzilla, you have Angelina Blow Lee, but your airbrush doesn't have a name. So my airbrush now has a name and his name is called, yes, he's a male because he has a long hose, so he needs to be male. His name is Miss the Great Blodini, like the Great Houdini, but the Great Blodini. <laughs> so, yes, there you have it. <laughs> he now has a name, thanks to a viewer letting me know that I was slacking in that department, you know? <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to do much to this because it's absolutely phenomenal. I just have to have some things uh, match up. Now, this is very important for me to say. I don't say, when I make something, if it's ugly, I tell you it's ugly. You know, the word roadkill is in my videos a lot when it comes to my painting, but my paintings. But this here is absolutely gorgeous. And when you see it up close, you'll know why. So I'm just going to blow out over here. And this is where the airbrush is good for. Because if I didn't have this airbrush, put it this way, I would be going to bed with multicolored boobs tonight because just bending over and trying to get areas when you have three canvases together is just a nightmare. So I love this airbrush. It's in my Amazon shop under the canvas and tools for acrylic pouring tab. So if you go in the description and look for the first link that says my Amazon shop, You'll see it right in there. So I'm just taking a look here. I'm gonna fix a few areas. And then I'm gonna give you a close up because again, this is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, uh, this area right here is bugging me. Just wanna move it out a little tiny bit, a little bit wider, like so. Okay, I'm done. I'm not playing around today, I'm just leaving it alone because the colors, again, are phenomenal. And once I get you down here, you'll know what I'm talking about. Alrighty, here we go. I'll show you with the lights off, or actually the flash off, and then I'll show it to you with it on. So if you enjoyed the video, please make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell. Once you click on that notification bell, if you don't click on the word all, it just selects personalized automatically and that does not give you the right notifications. So click on the little bell there and then click on the word all and then it will save it. The cells are amazing, no silicone, just Floetrol. Floetrol and different brands of, bright, of paint it's always a good thing. So now I'll just put this flash on and show you all those pretty colors. Of course, it will get a top coat of resin and I will show it once it's done, as long as it doesn't move on me.
here's the middle panel and obviously you can um, hang it either this way or upside down whichever way you want to do it have the red on the top So that is today's videos, my friend. I want to thank you all, as always, for your support. Oh, that looks like a foot. <laughs> your support. And um, if I don't see you and you celebrate Halloween, I want to wish you all a happy Halloween. And uh, don't forget to check out the description for all the coupons and links to the products that I use. I hope you all have an amazing day and happy pouring. Okay, resin. I use KS Resin. Link is in the description. It is the best resin in my opinion. Um, free shipping. Uh, great quality. And uh, extremely affordable. So you mix it up just like any other resin, equal parts of A and B, and you pour it in the center and work it out to the edges first, and then you go along and do your sides. You're gonna wanna torch it three times. Once after you're done spreading it around, another 15 minutes later do it, and then another 15 minutes later do it, and then put it somewhere covered. Um, for this demonstration, I had to use different paintings just to show you the steps, but now I'm showing you how to remove the tape and the drips. If for some reason, after heating this tape and removing those drips, there are a few that remain on the canvas, just take the heat gun. You'll see me do this in a second. Heat up those drips and just carefully slice them off with the razor knife. Now that little bit of staining underneath the tape is totally normal. Uh, you just want to try to keep as much of the back clean as possible. And you'll see here how nice those edges look after two coats. It's like you're putting a coat of glass over your painting. So the next thing I do is sign my painting. I uh, put gloves on to handle it. Use a rag that has no fibers or lint. You could get those by the bag full at Home Depot. They're just shop rags. And I wipe it off case any dust floated on it while I had it out there in the kitchen and um, put my signature on it. Now for my paintings, I use a seal that I make myself with a wax that you melt and you put the little metal thingy into it and it puts my letter T into that piece of wax. And then I just sign it. And now it's time to wrap it up. And with wrapping, you want to make sure you have some type of paper in between the painting and the bubble wrap. Or else that bubble wrap will leave a honeycomb print in the finish of the resin. So you can use wrapping paper, you can use tissue paper, brown craft paper, whatever you have that is plain, that has no printing. Like the you notice I'm using the white side of the wrapping paper up against the resin. This way, no chances of ink bleeding onto it or anything like that. And then, you know, put your bubble wrap on. Don't be cheap. No matter how much they tell you at the post office that they will handle your painting with care, they just don't care. They will toss it around like yesterday's uh, news and newspaper and they just don't, they don't care. It's sad to say. So make sure those edges are protected good and you will be good to go and put it into a box.
Priority boxes are the easiest way to go if you can find one that fits your painting. If not, a regular priority box, you can cut, you can combine two of them to make it bigger. Um, you'll see here that I score this edge because I'm having a hard time closing it. And I, I do apologize, I forgot to zoom the camera back out. But um, you'll see here that I score it and then I'm able to fold it and peel the sticky thing off there and just tape up that edge that you cut to make sure it's all closed in. Let me give you a real money saving tip right now when it comes to shipping. This, no lie, will change a painting from $40 to ship down to $25, $30. It saves that much, okay? So let's say this is a painting that I created and I need to ship. And I don't have the right size box. I have one close to the size, but don't have the right size it doesn't fit or it's just too big here is what you can do you can take your razor knife if only I had one <laughs> hold on take your razor knife okay slice open your box anywhere that it's taped to hold it together Slice it open. Okay. Spread it out so that it's a piece of cardboard. Now watch this. And I'm going to tell you why this saves you a lot of money. Put your painting inside, press it down, and tape the sides closed. Just like this. Now you literally have a mailing envelope, okay? And what it does is, with the post office, believe it or not, it's not the weight of the painting that adds cost. It's the box, the height of the box. Not even the width, it's the height. So if you mail your paintings out like this, like I said, just tape down, tape over these little slots so they're covered, there's no height, so they just charge you by the dimension of it, the, the width and the length. So it literally saves a lot of money, especially I'm going to give you another valuable tip. If you're shipping from the East Coast to the West Coast, it will be the most expensive to send, um, obviously, because it has to go the furthest. But this right here, doing this for paintings, saves me a lot of money. And you know something? If you take your bubble wrap and you wrap it up really nice and tight and put a couple of layers on, don't be cheap with the bubble wrap, don't be cheap with the tape, it's going to save you a lot of money. Um, also, whenever you send a package, priority mail, it comes with an automatic $50 insurance coverage. So if something happens to your package and you sent a priority, they will refund you $50 if it was their fault. Now, what I do for these packages for another $2, I bump the insurance up to $200 to cover the cost of the painting. Unless it's a $50 painting, then I will, won't add the extra insurance, but I find when I go to the post, post office, and I think they do this on purpose just so you'll use priority service, and they'll get that extra couple of dollars out of you. Most of my paintings, 99% of them, when I go to mail them, the regular rate is $10 for a regular old snail mail, and then priority is like $1.50 more. So for that $1.50, you're getting that $50 insurance and it's getting there within two or three days. 
And like I said, if the, the insurance doesn't cover the value that you sold your painting for, like if I sold a painting for $500, I would tell him add an extra $450 worth of insurance onto this package. And it's literally dollars. Every hundred dollars of coverage is like a dollar. So definitely look into that. But this here, this right here saves you a ton of money. And you know what else? You'll get a flattering compliment when you go to the post office because my postman says I am just the most creative mailer he knows. <laughs> so that's the end of my video, friends. I hope this helped you. And um, we can talk a little bit about places to sell your art next. Uh, but as far as the shipping portion, we're done with this part. Okay, so let's talk a little tiny bit about where to sell your art. So I'm going to just show you a couple of places to sell. Etsy is a great place to start. You can make your own Facebook page to put them up on there. You can go on Instagram. There's other selling sites like Shopify. And these are just a few of the known sites. And then there's always eBay. So I hope this was video, this video was helpful for you. And until next time, my friends, happy pouring.